So for today's video, I thought that I would do a breakdown and sort of like a recap, re-updated video of my ultimate minimalist wardrobe essentials. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I'm not really in love with the word essentials and sort of like recommending what wardrobe essentials people should have. I realize that that's really gonna be different for everybody. These essentials are what are essential to me, but if it doesn't work for you, your taste or your lifestyle, then don't feel like you need these items to complete your wardrobe. I think the key to this video is that through this foundation of clothing items, I have really discovered my personal style and this is a wardrobe that I have committed to wearing and that I know that I can wear moving forward and that I feel satisfied with. Without it feeling too overwhelming, confusing, or without feeling this need to keep adding more to it all the time. So one year later into minimalism, these are my top wardrobe essentials. And this video is sponsored by Organic Basics. I have worked with them before. They are one of my favorite clothing brands out there. So if you haven't heard of Organic Basics before, they are a really awesome, sustainably minded, carbon neutral brand from Copenhagen. Their clothing is ethically made in Europe with organic, recycled, and eco-friendly materials. And they are a certified B Corp corporation and members of 1% for the planet. They're really active in supporting a lot of environmental and human causes and sustainability and being more eco-conscious, eco-friendly is at the core of what they do. They carry a range of basics from bras and underwear to now denim, accessories and everyday wear. They use a lot of sustainable materials in their production like 100% got certified organic cotton and when they do use synthetic fibers it is 100% recycled nylon. I've been wearing and working out in Organic Basics products for years. I really do highly recommend them and they really do vet every step of their supply chain to make sure that workers are being paid fair wages, they're being environmentally friendly without sacrificing the quality of the items. Organic Basics did kindly send me a few pieces from their new Rib Flex line and their organic cotton mid-weight sweat sets. So I will be sharing and styling some of these pieces in today's video and I will leave everything linked down below if you want to take a look. So thank you again to Organic Basics for sponsoring this video and if you were interested in any of them after some consideration you can use my code in the description down below to save 10% off your order. So without a doubt my most worn item, the thing I reach for in my closet the most all year round is a crew neck t-shirt. For me personally, I really only prefer to go black or to go white, and I prefer a 100% cotton crew neck oversized fit. I don't like the t-shirt to be kind of stretchy or spandexy, and I don't really like it to hug the contours of my body at all. I really prefer to wear it a bit more oversized, and for me the best way that I've been able to do that is to just size up about one or two sizes from my true and usual size. My perfect t-shirt is going to have no logos, no patterns, and it's going to be either in a black or a white. If you prefer colors, logos, graphics, it's completely up to you what you like to wear and I find sticking with this style and color palette just makes it the most versatile in my wardrobe. My next set of essentials I definitely wear more in the summer but I do actually consider them a seasonless type of essential and that is a tank top. I love my tank tops and again I prefer a crew neck style with kind of a more racer back type of look. I also do have a few spaghetti strap style tank tops a few crop tank tops. So there's definitely a lot of variety when it comes to the style and the shape and the cut that you prefer. But I love a tank top in the summer because it, I think it's a great easy layering piece. I think it looks really flattering with jeans, leggings, joggers, sweatpants, even dress pants. It's just another really great basic that I find myself reaching for all the time. And the final type of top that I would recommend if it is your personal style, for me, mm, it isn't all the time, but I find every once in a while I do want to reach for something a little bit more crisp and less casual than a t-shirt or a tank top. And when I have that sort of itch, then I really do recommend a white button-up blouse. It can be silk, it can be cotton, it can be tensile, it can be really whatever you prefer for your style and for your body. I think white is probably the most versatile and classic color that you can reach for, but I've seen people wear blue, black, blue stripe. For me, I've had a really hard time finding a button up that I actually enjoy wearing and that I actually want to reach for because I always found them to be either a little too sheer or 
Um, they'd get wrinkly really easily or they'd be too stiff. I didn't realize I was so picky when it came to a button up shirt. And finally for tops, I always like to reach for a good layering piece, namely a sweater or a sweatshirt. For me, my favorite are more casual cotton types of sweaters. I think they look a little bit more vintage, more 90s, more effortless, but I think they just pair really well with a lot of the pieces that I already own. Like I can dress them up with dress pants. I can dress them down with jeans or leggings. So a cozy sweater, a layering piece is a must have in my everyday wardrobe. Getting into bottoms, I really do recommend a good pair of blue jeans and a pair of black jeans. If you are looking to maximize versatility in your wardrobe, then I would recommend that the denim not be distressed in any way. So no rips, no holes, making sure that the bottom of the denim is not frayed in any way. And when you have a pair of denim like that in your wardrobe, then you can wear it to more business casual events, wear it to the office, places like that. And it still really works as casual weekend wear too. For your denim, you can go with any cut you like. Skinny jeans are not out, they are classic. And if that is the cut that flatters your body the most, then definitely go for that. For me, I love a high rise denim. I usually look for a 10 or 11 inch rise at minimum. And in terms of the leg, I really prefer a sort of straight cut to even loose type of leg because I just really always find myself feeling most comfortable in a more relaxed type of fit. In terms of the denim though, I think going with 100% cotton sort of stiff denim is best. It will last you the longest and they really only do get better with wear. My next essential bottom is a pair of high-waisted pleated straight leg trousers. For me, these are the ones that I definitely get the most wear out of. They work for so many different occasions. You can dress them up, you can dress them down, you can wear this to an event, wear them to work, you can wear them on a date, you can wear them on a weekend. And I do find the straight leg cut to be the most classic, the most versatile. You can play around with the shape and the style that you prefer, but this pair has served me really well for the past two years. I find them really flattering and effortless. Um, and really versatile. And when it comes to your capsule wardrobe, that's really what you wanna be looking for. And when it comes to wardrobe essentials, I think the more ways that you can mix and match them, the better. And in terms of bottoms, I have a couple of more that I really like to wear on an everyday basis. And that's in the vein of athleisure wear. So that is joggers, sweatpants, and leggings. So some of my essential loungewear pieces in my wardrobe are a pair of joggers. I prefer a black pair because I find it is the most versatile. If you wanna dress them up, you can easily hide the drawstring and style them with a pair of like black booties. I've worn these joggers with blazers. I've worn them with t-shirts and sweatshirts and hoodies. I find in terms of color palette, when you stick with like a darker color, like a black or a navy, then I think it lends itself a little bit more easily to sort of pulling off this business casual, more elevated look. It doesn't look like you're wearing sweatpants. It doesn't look necessarily like you're going to the gym. And I think that's what makes these so versatile. In addition to those joggers, I really love a good pair of sweatpants. I'd recommend either black, cream, or gray, but I do love me a matching gray sweatsuit. I find gray are like the epitome of casual cool. I find it looks really cool with like oversized t-shirts. If you pair it with trench coats, with a hoodie, with a matching color sweatshirt, and then some white sneakers and then if you style it up with accessories or whatever your layering pieces are i think that's when it starts to enter this very sort of cool athleisure streetwear territory that i just absolutely love to wear and my favorite part about it is that it's super comfortable i love me a good pair of leggings because i think again it walks this line of athletic wear and everyday wear and for me a good pair of high-waisted black leggings are stretchy comfortable i have definitely worn leggings with blazers and and a sports bra or a crop top or a t-shirt. Leggings are not just for the gym anymore and I also really strongly feel that leggings aren't necessarily about you giving up or just feeling too bloated to wear anything else that day. But for me, I'm not gonna play around and pretend like I wear jeans and trousers all day long. I definitely don't. My everyday wardrobe really leans towards more of an athleisure, casual type of style because I wanna be comfortable but still feel cute. And I think all of these are great options to sort of help make sure you can achieve that. And you might notice in my minimalist wardrobe, there's no skirts and there's no dresses. And that's because I have come to accept that I don't like to wear skirts or dresses. 
I actually decluttered all of them. But for you, if a skirt or a dress is part of your everyday wear, if, if that's an option that you like to choose to dress up, to go to events, to go on dates, things like that, then definitely add that in your wardrobe, feel free. For me, a skirt and a dress, like an LBD or a slip skirt or any of those things, I had them, I played around with them in my wardrobe, I never felt comfortable, I never felt my best, and they really wore me at the end of the day rather than me wearing the clothes. I don't own things like cardigans, capes, I don't know, what else do you layer with? So for me, one of my number one layering pieces is a blazer. For me, a blazer is like the ultimate easy way to dress up an outfit and just make it look like I tried, but I'm also just so effortless and fabulous and I kind of know what I'm doing when I'm dressing. Like all you need to do is throw on a blazer and you immediately look put together. My most worn by far is black. I think black is the most versatile. I think it mixes and matches really easily with things. It's very subtle, um, but it also can really command the outfit once you do put it on. It's always just like chef's kiss finishing touch, you know? Obviously a moto jacket that is slightly oversized in a moto biker style is my number one jacket of all time. I wear this in the winter, I wear it in the summer, and I feel most at home when I'm wearing a moto jacket. This is a vegan leather one that actually is if you can see it, it's starting to sort of flake off and fall apart on me a little bit um, because it is vegan leather. That's the one thing that I do find about vegan leather is that it doesn't last as long. So if you can see on there, it is starting to flake off. If you were looking for like a long-term wardrobe staple, I really would recommend leather, but if that's not something that you agree with, then a vegan leather option is great or a secondhand leather. But for me, it is just the ultimate in versatility, it's the ultimate piece to add a little bit of edge. And for me, it's the one piece in my wardrobe that makes me truly feel like myself. So it's gotta be in there. This could be more climate specific, but I do think a nice wool overcoat for like dressy points is a great option to have in your closet. It can be black, gray, navy. For me, I like to go a little bit oversized so that it just feels a little more effortless and a little less structured. And then for shoes, since I live in Canada, there really are only four pairs of shoes that I think are kind of necessary. First pair is a pair of chic black Chelsea boots. I decided to go with a pointed toe and a heel because that way it provides me more versatility when it comes to wanting to dress up. If I have an occasion to go to and I don't wanna wear like traditional high heels or strappy sandals, then I will go for boots like this. I think a pointed toe makes it a little bit more sleek and elevated, a little more sophisticated. Um, and the heel is not too high where I am screaming by the end of the night. My next shoe essential is a pair of sneakers. So for me, that shows up as a pair of plain white sneakers. It's just a really great way to add a little bit of a more casual touch to your outfits. And I find that they aren't too chunky. And they're not muddied up with logos or patterns or things like that to just keep everything really simple and chic and timeless. And since I am such a sneaker person, if I'm not feeling the, the white sneaker, I always just lean towards a classic black pair of Converse. They're more versatile than I ever really thought they would be. They're really cool. They just just add a lot of like fun sort of playful edge but they're just there's something about them that just makes them feel really stylish really cool and really effortless that I absolutely love and then finally since I do live in Canada we get all four seasons and since I do live such a pedestrian lifestyle I think having a really comfortable casual everyday walking boot is a really good thing to have in my particular wardrobe I've had my Blundstones for about four years now, and they're just a great all-around, all-weather walking shoe. Well, maybe not necessarily in the wintertime, we can talk more about that another, another day, but I find these, especially for the spring and fall and early winter, are really great for walking to and from, and then I can sort of change my shoe later on from there. So those are my sort of ultimate minimalist capsule wardrobe essentials. You may have noticed there's a few things that are missing from the wardrobe, like color, like patterns, like blouses, like dresses, like a trench coat. I think all of these things are fun add-ons and feel free to absolutely do that. But I think in terms of a base foundation, a really good building block wardrobe that you can mix and match and wear in a bunch of different ways, 
or repeat the same outfits over and over and over again, but still feel your best, I think these are a great place to start. And it is ultimately the place that I took my wardrobe and how I feel my best when I'm getting dressed every day. Thanks again to Organic Basics for sponsoring this video. If you were interested in any of the pieces, I will leave everything linked down below for you. And you can use my code to save a little bit of cash at checkout. Let me know what your wardrobe staples are, what your ultimate wardrobe basics are. Are they different? Are they the same? Do you agree? Leave this video a thumbs up if you liked it, you guys. It really does help support my channel a lot. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'd love to see you back. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye.